Jack, tell us about the Grave Dancer. Uh, yes, I. Uh, so I'm more of a real estate guy myself. So I, ha- I was like, trying to think of who like my idolized investor are, and and like like Tommy said, there's so many to choose from. Um, but I'm I'm going with Sam Zell, um, since he uh, we had our conversation a lot about cash and liquidity last last time, and he's he's probably someone you can learn so much about the value of having cash available in a crisis or even not in a crisis, just having the flexibility to go in and and really do some otherwise fairly risky things to deals um, because you can get them at such a good price when no one else has liquidity. Um, so there, there is tremendous value to having cash, even in an inflationary environment, for example. He, he made a ton of money in the 70s during stagflation with real estate since he was one of the few guys who had a ton of cash available to go in buy these properties with fixed rate debt and then ride the inflation wave to, to huge gains. Um, whereas other people who didn't have enough money at the time were out. So he's got a lot of great lessons beyond that, of course, but that's kind of the central theme that he, that he often goes by. And Brad, like you were saying, the grave dancer is the nickname he's earned since he often will uh, sort of hang around distressed deals, looking, looking for ways to, to that he could um, restructure a deal or do something to, to make it better since he really takes the value investing approach and applies it super heavily to real estate um, and that he's trying to get things below cost, below their replacement costs. So, so the cost to actually build the building. That's his general approach to real estate investing. And it's paid off handsomely for him now. He does a fair bit of stock investing too. He's got a SPAC right now, for example. Um, so that's, that's, my, uh, that's my two cents on Sam Zell. Plus he's a, he's a very entertaining speaker uh, when, he, when he does speak. He's got a great book as well, uh, Am I Being Too Subtle? which uh, got on my desk right here. This one is a great one. Highly recommend. Yeah, cool. Ha- has Sam Zell ever invested or made big bets outside of real estate or is just that's yep. purely been his focus? Yeah, that's his like, that's his main niche. Um, but let's see, he bought uh, uh, the, not the Tribune, he bought a huge newspaper a long time ago, Charlie Munger-esque, I suppose. Um, and then turned that around. He bought a bunch of radio companies back in like, I think the 90s or the 2000s. Um, he's trying to get a distribution tech firm right now with his SPAC. Um, so, so a variety of holdings, but yeah, his bread and bread and butter has been, um, real estate mainly. He, he sort of pioneered the office REIT, uh, which wasn't really a thing before he started doing it a, a few decades back, um, and, and had a ton of success with it. Yeah. How, how does he always end up with so much cash at the right times? What, what's he doing? Is he just, he, is he, he, is he a hardcore market timer trying to sell? Uh, kind of, kind of. He has a very, he has a hair trigger to sell is what it kind of seems like. And it's worked out very well. Uh, his, his most famous deal was when he sold off equity office, which was this huge office portfolio. He sold it to back BlackRock in like 2007 or 2006, right before the crash. And, and made out like a bandit. <laughs> so, and then uh, used that to go buy things like Equity Commonwealth, which is the company that that I invested in, Karan's invested in as well, sitting on a ton of cash right now, waiting patiently for that deal. Um, basically, he he doesn't. It's not so much market timing, but he'll he'll look at the cost to actually build the property, for example. And if he gets an offer he can't refuse, he's going to take it. Um, he's not he's not hesitating to to take a deal when it's uh, when he can sell it and potentially wait for a better opportunity when, when there is a crash or when there's some distress deal that he can take advantage of. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't call him a market timer, but that's kind of how it's ended up working for him in when he happens to sell his deals. Um, it's not like he was predicting the 2008 crash when he did that, but he said that he got an offer he couldn't refuse, which makes sense since things got so euphoric. He doesn't get caught up in the euphoria is probably the best answer. What What is uh, Sam Zell's current position on the office space that that environment is he pretty firm on that or is he branching out into other sectors what's what's he doing he he's uh he's not super stubborn but yes he he is bullish on office long term even downtown office which has obviously been hit hard this year well revenue wise it's been fine but a lot of offices especially in the u.s are still like largely empty downtown and uh and he has major concerns that there's been a huge oversupply of office buildings in the last 20 to 30 years. Um, so he, he has concerns there and he's looking at other areas in real estate as well. The only one he's been really out against has been retail. He calls it a falling knife. Um, so he's trying to stay away from that. Um, but he is not net bearish on office. 
my guess is he's waiting for something to happen to the office market so he can get in, get those below replacement cost, uh, cost deals. Since he really does believe that working from home on a broad scale isn't super effective. He's, he's very much into the, so, the social environment of working because uh, that's how he's run his companies. So he is pretty bullish on office, uh, generally speaking, but he's not going to overpay for office. It, it is, uh, that's his general approach.